Hey everyone, welcome to another monitor review. Dell Singapore has kindly sent me one of their latest HDR capable monitors to check out. This is the Dell S2719DM. Now in my review today, I'll be talking about the specifications. I'll be showing you the differences between HDR video versus normal video as viewed on this monitor. And lastly, I'm going to talk about the types of people who would enjoy this monitor and whether or not it's worth the money. So um, I'm going to unbox this and show you what's included. These are the only cables included. We have a HDMI cable, full-size HDMI ports on both ends. We have the power cable and this goes to the power brick here. And this will go to the monitor. So this is the monitor. There is some anti-glare coating applied on it. Now it's a 27 inch monitor. The resolution is 2560 by 1440. Not a lot of adjustability. You can only tilt the monitor up and down. Let's take a look at the side profile. It's really thin on three edges, the top and the sides. And then it curves from the thin to something that is thicker in the center here. But Overall, it's a very slim monitor and it looks fantastic. The stand looks very beautiful. It's a very minimalist design. I like it a lot. I think this is probably Dell's most beautiful monitor. So here, this is the back. This material here, this is actually plastic. Initially, I thought, I thought this was some metal, but it's actually plastic. It's matte surface. So we have the Dell logo there. The connection ports are actually behind here. The stand is already attached to the monitor. And I think there are some screws below. Yes, you can, you can remove the stand if you want to, but this is not VESA mountable. So you cannot mount this onto a VESA amp. So you have to use this stand with it. This stand is very beautiful. This is metal. This is metal as well. I love the design. These are the only ports available, a 3.5 audio jack, two full-size HDMI ports, and this is for the power cable. Cable management is very neat. You just connect the cables through the hole to the back of the monitor. This is how the monitor looks when it's set up. My first impression of it was Wow, this looks like a floating screen because of the thin bezels on four sides, on all the sides, and also the thin stand. So it really looks like a floating screen. Now, I have strong sunlight coming from the right side, and anti glare is doing its job, but this still looks a bit washed out to me because the light source is too strong. So usually when I'm working with this monitor, I need to close the curtain like this so that the colors they do not appear as washed out. The bezels are really thin on all four sides. Compared to my fingernail, it's even smaller than that. The menu and power buttons are located at the bottom right side here. So with the menus, you can change the input source, the color, brightness, contrast. You can choose between different display modes, like when you're playing games, you go into game mode, or when you're playing videos, you can choose movie mode. And if you want to play HDR content, you can turn on movie HDR. That's when the monitor will detect HDR content and play HDR content appropriately. The contrast ratio of this monitor is 1 to 1000. The brightness, the typical brightness is up to 400. And when you are playing HDR content, it can go up to 600. As for the color support, I have done some measurement using my Spider 5 Pro Color Calibrator. And this monitor, it supports up to 100% sRGB, 71% NTSC, and 77% Adobe RGB. This, by the way, is my text review of this monitor. Now I do not have any equipment to measure the DCI-P3 reading, so I did some research. Now this monitor is marketed to support up to 85% DCI-P3, but according to my research from other websites, it only goes up to 75%. I have been using this monitor extensively for two weeks to create digital content. I edit videos, photos, I create digital artworks, and 
My overall experience is very positive. The colors, they look great. I mean, this monitor is supports up to 100% sRGB, so color accuracy is quite good. Now for my print design work, I need Adobe RGB, so I actually have another monitor that supports up to 99% Adobe RGB. So when it comes to print design work, this is not the right type of monitor for me, but for general graphic design work, basic photo, video editing, no problem at all, more than good enough. And the colors out of the box is great. You don't need additional color calibration, but if you need that extra color accuracy, then of course I would advise you to color calibrate the screen. This is the environment that I typically work in. I close the curtains so that I do not get any glare on the screen. This is the backlight bleeding. There is some backlight bleeding on the top left and right side. And of course, there is the typical IPS glow because this is an IPS panel. All right, let's compare HDR content versus non-HDR content. The most important thing to take note of before you buy a HDR capable monitor is to make sure that the software that you're using, the hardware, the OS that you're using, they can support HDR content. If not, you'll just be wasting money getting a HDR monitor and there is no way to play HDR content because your computer doesn't support it, which is the case right here. I'm playing this video through my Mac and Mac computers, the MacBook Pro, the iMac, Mac Mini, Mac Pro, they all do not support HDR content. So you can buy a HDR movie from Apple iTunes and play through your computer. You will not get the HDR capability. You will not get the HDR content showing on the screen, which is um, what is uh, showing right here. Now I'm going to play you a clip from this non-HDR version of this movie. Pay special attention to the details in the hair and also in the shadow areas, especially the black areas. Pay attention to the details in the hair. You can see this area here. The hair, this area here, this area here, it's almost black. Very difficult to see any details, the individual strands of hair. Pay attention to the webbing on the soldier. See this area here? It's almost black. This area here, this is almost black. Not a lot of details in the shadow areas. All right, let's switch over to using Apple TV. Apple TV supports HDR content, but not Apple computers. All right, now pay attention to the hair again. Now I can see more details in the hair. Pay attention to the webbing in the, on the soldier. You can see some hints of highlight, a bit more detail compared to previously playing the non-HDR video. See more details there. So this is the HDR version of the movie and I can definitely see a lot more details in the hair. So this is not just a black mass of blackness. Now you can see the hair, the highlights in the hair, even though this area is supposed to be very dark. Let me switch over to the non-HDR version. So this is the non-HDR version and a lot of details is lost in the shadow areas, in the black areas here. Now I've tried to capture this as accurately with my camera as possible using the same settings and this is how it looks. This monitor is for people who consume HDR content, HDR movies, who play HDR games. If you do not have HDR content, then there is really no reason to buy a HDR monitor. And this monitor, well, you can play games on it, but the frame rate is going to top out at 60 because this is a 60 Hertz monitor. If you play HDR games on consoles using this monitor, I think it will be an incredible experience. The brightness is great, the colors are great, and the sharpness is pretty good also. Now there is some backlight. I can still see some backlight even though I'm playing this screen here. And even though the room is not totally dark, I can still see some backlight at the top left and right corners. So is this monitor worth the money? Well, you decide. 
If you are someone who appreciates the finer things in life, if you have a lot of HDR content, then it makes more sense to get a HDR capable monitor. Personally for me, I have some HDR content, HDR movies, but um, I don't mind watching them on a non-HDR monitor, so not having a HDR monitor is not a deal breaker for me. But if I have an extensive catalog of HDR content games, then obviously I would get a HDR monitor. Now one good thing about HDR monitors is um, nowadays the prices, they are coming down and they are coming down pretty quickly. So the official retail price for this is US $380, which is significantly lower compared to Dell's first HDR monitor, the Dell UP2718Q. That was, um, that was quite expensive. And the reason for the difference is because that monitor it can support up to 1000 nits of brightness. This only goes up to 600. All right, so that's the end of my review today. So you decide whether or not it's worth your money. I think this is a pretty decent monitor. The build quality, the design is great. And overall, for the past two weeks that I've been using this, I am very satisfied at its performance. So yeah. That's all for my review today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If I have any updates to my review, I will update my text review. The link to that will be in the video description below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.